munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the PetSmart 2020 care guide and if it's any good. The pet stores are not really the greatest place to give that to you because the companies that supply those pet stores are there to make money. They will advertise that hay barrels and salt licks are appropriate for guinea pigs and that's with the company and pet store by the way. The employees in which they hire are usually just rotated all the time newcomers that in their training videos for a pet Co and pet smart and possibly pets at home, etc. etc. They only tell you how to spot an injury, how to spot sickness, not knowing about the species or where they came from, etc. etc. They just train you to be cleaning janitor for the pets. And apparently you're supposed to make sales of these animals to customers with zero knowledge by saying, oh yeah, just follow our care guides. So that's why I'm here. Are these good? Are these bad? We shall find out. And it's been long overdue for the guinea pigs because we foster guinea pigs at Munchie's Place for Homeless Pets here in Washington State. That's our rescue for small mammals. Now, guinea pigs are usually not the ones that I typically foster, but I took in some pairs of guinea pigs at the beginning of the year, and unfortunately now, we still have them. So introducing today, our two beloved brothers here, Jelly and Marshmallow. So they're actually gonna be right here. Uh, we've been having a good time when it comes to bonding and I haven't really talked or showed you guys these guys. So let me just give you a brief explanation as to where they came from. Their past owners left them on the patio of her apartment complex or condominium to breed constantly. So she, there was like 28 or 29 guinea pigs and this other rescue that we are partnered with took them in but needed them to be placed. So we decided to take in a pair. It just stinks because why keep an animal on a patio. That's like the number one neglect that you typically would see is an animal left on the patio, no shelter, no food or water, just left out there without the patio door open so that they can go in and out freely. Just like me living in apartment life back then when I was growing up, I saw a great Dane on a patio. Why get the pet? Why leave it out there? Oh, I don't want the pet messing up the house. Don't have it then. If the pet's not gonna fit in with your lifestyle, do not get it. So they're just here because I want to get them used to human interaction and talking and they are better about being handled and picked up and petted than the others. They are actually a lot more chill than the ones over there because the ones that I still have yet to introduce you guys to, which is Bean and Frenchie, they just scatter whenever they see humans. Even though they take treats from you, they just are not comfortable with touchy touchy. These guys, they don't chirp, they don't, you know, <laughs> vibrate when they're, you know, afraid and angry. They are perfectly fine with being touched, but they are not at the point of saying, hey, I'm super friendly and I love you, so keep doing that. Still gonna try my best to work with them, but this might be the way that they will always be. So let's just get into the guide. Yikes. I don't know if you guys are seeing this because unfortunately I have a filter on where it tells me if it's too bright then it just does those little wavy lines that you guys can't see. So it sounds like I'm talking like a crazy person. It's a camera setting. That's what it is. They say in here guinea pigs can live five to eight years. However, guinea pigs come into pet stores from the breeding mills of which they are supplied massively for different species of small animals. Um, they usually come in with tumors or ringworm, <laughs> fun, or just complications, or they were just not fed a proper diet. When I was working at a pet store, a lot of guinea pigs came in from the breeding mills that had a uh, vitamin C deficiency. They were just being fed guinea pig food, more than likely a pelleted diet that is just suited for all hay creatures. And in the pelleted diet, it is supposed to contain vitamin C and they are supposed to give vitamin C in the form of fresh fruits and veggies. However, breeding mills typically may or may not do this. They might just do the water drops, which is not adequate and the vitamin C will dissipate. So they don't come in the best of care and they typically don't live that long. If you do get a guinea pig living to eight years, wow. I've actually heard of a few people who have guinea pigs live as old as 10, which is incredible, but the guinea pigs as of late that are getting massively pushed down to pet stores because they need to keep up the supply and demand, which us humans are creating, by the way. Thank you for that, people who purchase pets at pet stores. In the US, by the way, because I understand other places, you really can't get other animals except for with a pet supplier, but hopefully in the future we can change that. But here in America, there is options like rescuing. Petfinder.com, please support our rescues that try really, really hard. Oh, these guys have been overlooked so many times and they're such adorable, wonderful guinea pigs to take care of. I'm just so sad that it's been half a year, but they've actually been looking since November for a place of their own. So it really, really, really sucks that they're still within our care and we might actually have them for another year. I really don't want that to happen. So in here it says 
diet and it says that the guinea pig should be supplemented with 25 to 50 milligrams of vitamin C per day. However, LA guinea pig rescue says that's way too high and it should be around 10 to 30. And in this guide, they do not specify how guinea pigs get their vitamin C. So vitamin C should be provided with fresh fruits and veggies. We got parsley, we got bell peppers, and some people do biscuits that is from Oxbow, which there has been some criticism when it comes to vitamin C kept inside of food because they're supposed to be kept out of sunlight, direct sunlight, and over time vitamin C will begin to fade. So we don't exactly know if the vitamin C in pelleted diets is actually working or not. We always provide fresh fruits and veggies here at the rescue. So the way they get that should be from fresh fruits and veggies. Don't do water drops, it's not needed. And don't do biscuits unless you really think that you should because maybe you skimmed out on like the bell peppers or you ran out and you're not aware. It says right here, experience level B beginner. Size, guinea pigs grow up to 12 inches. Guinea pigs are social animals and thrive when raised in pairs, but only house same gender pairs together. I just wanted to nip that in the butt right now. You can make it so that your guinea pigs can be spayed and neutered. Spaying is a lot better if you have a female because they do get ovarian cysts. It is an uncommon thing, but it's becoming more common. But just in general, when it comes to females, we have a lot of issues where we have ovarian cysts and things that just kind of obstruct our quality of life. So so it is appropriate to house females with males as long as they are fixed. That is very, very possible. But just remember, males are territorial. So if you do have one boar, maybe two females. So before we move into the habitat part, let's talk about the thing that you see right here. That is a wire cage that KT usually markets towards guinea pigs as their starter enclosure. That's not an enclosure that provides no wiggle room. These guys are like any sort of farm animal that's herding. They want to be in large groups and they want to spread out and run around. You do not keep them in something that is considered a shoebox size. See my bed here? If they had that much room, it would be great. Even though this guinea pig looks like it's small, that's the size of a baby. Babies are much smaller than these guys right here. So this is an adult guinea pig. And look how big he is. A lot of people in the pet stores say that, wow, I didn't know guinea pigs get that big. Yes, they do. This is what you typically don't see in pet stores because they always have babies. Sometimes if they're not doing it right and they're not putting the animal up for sale once they get old enough, then they typically would stay at the pet store until someone purchases them or is able to be adopted without an adoption fee or a small fee. But yeah, look how big this boy is. Look at him. Look at his belly. He's so big. Lord, he's so big, Jelly. I know how you know how to get in. There you go. Come on. Come on. There you go. Cuddle up to your brother. You guys are so sweet. Wouldn't that be sad if an adult guinea pig was in something like this, where you just have one hide Maybe you have a food station in that. I mean, this right here, which you probably can't see, but I have one of their beddings here. This is just too small of a space for them. They definitely need something big and better because they do like to jump around. They're not like rabbits where they're like, woo, they hop all over the place, but they will kick their feet and get excited and run around. Visualization right here is not appropriate. Choose a habitat at least 24 by 36 by 24. So definitely don't take the advice of this because this is not suitable for one or two guinea pigs. And if you're wondering about the square foot of that analysis right here, that's only six square feet. No, anything smaller than 47 by 24 by 18, which is about 7.8 square feet is too small. And that's the size of a Midwest guinea pig cage, which is the minimum cage size. Now, when I talk about minimum, there is a scale where people just really don't want you going past, but you could definitely go all the way out to the very best if you want. But the scale is there because new time pet owners make the mistake and get stuff that's not appropriate because companies make not appropriate enclosures for them and they get duped. So when people say, hey, this is a minimum, they will tell you this is what is still considered to be good, but would be better if you could do something larger for your situation. I know some people always say, why do I always say the minimum in videos? Why do I always do the minimum? That's because 
bigger is better, which is easier to say, and not all the time people are going to want to get the biggest thing. You gotta understand, we cannot always hold everybody's hand and say, you need a, a night angel bigger world for your hamster. Not all the time people are gonna listen to that, and it's not good to give forceful advice. You wanna make sure that people can approach you and be like, hey, I do have this, I'm gonna try this, and if this doesn't work, I am open to getting something bigger and better. Like, if people listen, that's great, but just trying to force people to do what you want them to do is gonna be a disaster. Like when people tell me I have to tell someone not to do this and not to do that in a very toxic and negative way, it can be seen as being spoken down to a little bit instead of being like, oh, hey, we have to just let them have the advice and run with it. Let them do their own research and run with it. Let your child do whatever they want, experience the world, and then let them learn. <laughs> As a community here, at least try to make sure that people have the right advice and hopefully people are listening. Also, PetSmart says add one hide for six square feet of space. That's not appropriate. These guys, if you have multiple guinea pigs, multiple hides. And you wanna make sure you have stuff that's comfortable for them too, because not all the time they wanna hide. Sometimes they wanna be laying flat out on their little pads or they wanna be in something like this little cuddle cup. They say here, place the habitat in a low humidity area between 65 to 75, line the habitat with an appropriate amount of clean bedding. Bedding should be spot cleaned as needed and changed as directed by product packaging. Now product packaging doesn't always give out the best advice and they don't say which bedding to use. They don't give you a sense of idea of what's safe, what's appropriate. Anything that is Aspen shavings is appropriate. Some people say kiln dried pine is appropriate. However, for the small animal community of hamsters, triples, and mice, we have found out that pine kiln dried is not that great. And we've had a mixed debate about people saying kiln dried is fine. And some people saying it's not. It actually doesn't remove the toxins in there. But the guinea pig community strongly supports pine that's kiln dried. I say if there's aspen out there, which there is at your local pet store, purchase that. However, I do tend to use just fleece that has either U-Haul paddings that are in the stitching or just reusable liners or dog pads. But the dog pads need to be replaced frequently. So it says right here, try litter training your guinea pig by placing a litter pan in the corner of their home. Again, doesn't tell you what litter to use. Never ever use cat clumping litter, all right? Because you can block their intestines, you can block their little bum bum, and it will cause problems. So when it comes to litter, just place a cat low shallow litter box in there and place hay inside of there and place that right under the hay rack so that when hay falls, it goes into the litter tray and that litter tray could just be shifted out and changed. So sometimes they use say for instance, paper bedding or aspen bedding for litter, and that's completely fine. And then they just use one of these cloths as a main source of bedding to change out frequently. That's totally fine too. Add a hay feeder and chew sticks to keep their teeth healthy. They don't explain why they need them because these incisors of theirs, their teeth are constantly growing so they need to be able to grind. And they don't actually say, at least right now, they don't actually say what type of hay, how much hay to feed, what age to give alfalfa hay, what age to give Timothy hay. So they don't actually say that here. So you're gonna be clueless as to why your new baby guinea pig needs alfalfa because it has the added vitamins in it. Now it says here, what should I feed my guinea pig? 80% hay, 10% pallets, 5% fruits and treats and 5% vegetables. I really feel like the vegetables here are very low and you don't need to be feeding treats at all to your guinea pigs. They really don't need it. I would say if you want to treat, do the biscuit way where you have the vitamin C biscuit and if you feel like they don't have enough vitamin C that you gave from the fresh veggies, give them the biscuit. So this right here says, when should I contact a veterinarian? So it's just the basics of, oh, um, whenever they look bad, yada, yada, yada. So we're just gonna go to the checklist because this is what people are supposed to be doing at PetSmart. They see the checklist and they're like, check, check, check. We have all this in the shopping cart, right? We're purchasing the animal and the items at the same time. Cause you know, <laughs> that's not good advice. Don't do that. Please don't do that. But people, they just don't know. They don't know any better. They think that this will provide them with everything. So let's go over this. It says habitat or pen size, which we already said is way too small. Hay feeder and hay. Fortify guinea pig pelleted diets. These have supplemental vitamin C. Vitamin C supplements, critical for their health. Food bowl, water bottle, hide, bedding, prepared treats, grooming kit, wood chew. Now I just wanna move to the side and let you guys know that little jelly here has moved out of the cuddle shack and they're in a more comfortable state. This is great. This is what I really want them to do so that they can get comfortable enough so that I can just go, hi there. Hi, sweetheart. Aren't you so sweet? 
So PetSmart says water bottle here, but they don't specify the size of water bottle, how many water bottles per guinea pig, and if you can use a bowl, because you definitely can use a bowl. Personally, I don't like using bowls, but bowls can be beneficial if your guinea pigs have a larger space. You know, it's interesting. It says grooming kit, but it never specifies how to groom your animal or what you need for grooming. You need to, for these guys, make sure that their teeth are not overgrowing, because that means if they are overgrowing, a vet trip is needed to trim their teeth. Naturally, Actually, if you have long hair guinea pigs, you use a brush to maintain them and scissors to trim them when they are too long and they need to be maintained because their fur may be growing, they may get matted. Unfortunately, some guinea pigs are just worse off being matted than others. And there's also nail trimmings that have to happen. Go check out LA Guinea Pig Rescue for basic care and information. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This is just me talking about what I've learned and what I've built up when it comes to caring for guinea pigs at the rescue. Comment down below with anything you wish to talk about when it comes to guinea pigs and what maybe you've learned or maybe what the pet store told you and then you found out later wasn't good like salt licks. Thank you guys so much. If you want to become a part of the Munchkin family, please subscribe. I'll see you around in the next future video from Munchie's Place. Ta-ta! Bye!